Oh dearie me, Vertonghen has just walked off the pitch. Sent off. We've got five minutes to go in the game and I thought I might as well hit record now. It's it's game over. We've won this match and uh, the feelings are so raw right now because I'm, I'm watching it right now. So uh, slightly different review today, seeing as the game isn't even... Oh, oh, the game's not even over and the Tottenham fans are walking out. See you later. See you later, guys. This game has been incredible. Moments of craziness, ups and downs. I think it's been the craziest game of our season so far. But I am all for it. <laughs> I really am. This this has been something else. I've actually made a little list of, uh, of reasons why I love Emery. And then I have a list of reasons why I love Torreira and Aubameyang. I can't get through it all in one video. But today is a huge example of why Emery is exactly what this club has needed for a long, long time. A long time. Tottenham have been the better team. They might even still be the better squad right now on paper for the last four or five seasons, arguably. Okay, not anymore. I think with Emery coming to Arsenal, with the signing of Torreira, the signing of Leno, the signing of Aubameyang last year, of course, under Wenger, Lacazette obviously now really hitting the ground running this season, we're a better team than Tottenham. And even if you disagree, what have Tottenham won? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I think it, it's back to where it should be. Tottenham are no, no, no longer better than Arsenal. Maybe on paper, but I don't think they will beat us this season. We've got them again in a couple of weeks in the Carabao Cup. We've got them again, of course, uh, in the Premier League. I can't remember when that game is, when we play them at wherever they're going to be playing at the time, Wembley, or their new stadium. I don't care. I think we'll beat them every single time this season. Oh, dear. Harry Winks. Oh, dear. He's getting mad. Oh, he's salty. He is so salty right now. But why is Emery such a huge difference in this squad? This, this is why. He's always positive. This manager is a breath of fresh air. Always positive. I don't hear any negativity. He sets the team up to play well, play positive football. I'm not saying Wenger didn't, but there was a lot of negativity, especially after games where we'd lost, drawn, or even won but played terribly. Wenger seemed to be quite negative. I think he had enough. He had enough of the media, put it that way. With Emery, I don't see any of that. So far, of course. Next thing I've put down here is he makes early changes. We were losing this game at halftime. We started this game fantastically the first 30 minutes or so we could have been two three four nil up right and then we got the one nil advantage with a penalty definite penalty by the way but then Tottenham two goals in two minutes and we find ourselves two one down going into the break and do you know what he does he makes two massive changes Iwobi and Mkhitaryan didn't really do much in the first half the formation clearly wasn't quite right he takes them off at half time why wait if you can see there's an issue, this is what we wanted, remember, Arsenal fans. We wanted Wenger to do this for years. Just make a change. He would wait until the 70th minute. The game's gone by then. So Emery comes in and he starts making changes at halftime. This is not the first time. He brings on Ramsey. He brings on Lacazette. And what do you know? Instantly, they make an impact. The change in formation, it looked like it was a four... Well, I can see it right now with a few more minutes left. It's basically a 4 3 one, two. Because we had to take off Mustafi. He got a little bit injured towards the end there. So it worked. It absolutely worked. But it, even if it didn't work, it's just nice to see a manager with confidence to make a change at half time when you clearly need it. It's a big risk. It can go massively wrong. And, you know, using two subs up before the second half's even kicked off, it's a little bit risky. It can be anyway. The other thing as well, Gwenduzi coming on, it just shows. He's got faith in youth. We saw in the Europa League, of course, the next Europa League game, which doesn't matter, he'll be playing all of the youngsters. But I love to see that. I'm glad he's taken that on from Wenger, who was always up for playing youth players. And he's doing it now. Even though Gwenduzi isn't a youth academy player or a player that's come through the ranks. Oh, that was a terrible tackle. Aurier, mate, that was filthy. Yellow card for Aurier there. Arsenal fan, apparently. Plays for Tottenham. Um... What was I saying? Oh, yeah, Gwendoza. He's not a Youth Academy player, but he feels like it, doesn't he? And he's playing him in a derby when we were in need of a midfield change. You know, six minutes added on. Woo! That's a lot of time. Why are you complaining, Class Natch? We we've won this game. Don't worry about it. The next thing, and it kind of ties in with the making early changes, you know, two subs at half time. It's 
it's the no fear in the in the decisions he's making. I always felt like Wenger was scared to make a change, especially if we were winning a game. He was almost like, well, we're winning. I don't want to make a change. But you've got to remember these players need to come off every now and again. You need to make changes. And making a change, although it can be risky, you might disrupt the flow of the game, your, your team's playing well together. But if you are potentially going to be conceding goals in the future, bringing on a sub could change that. It, it could change the course of the game because you've got someone with fresh legs, fresh state of mind and ready to go. You know, a lot of players will suddenly in the final 10 minutes dip and that's when you're most vulnerable, right? And the last thing I've put here, and this, this is one of the things that I've always gone on about when Wenger was managing Arsenal for so long, he just sat in his chair the whole time. and He, he, wasn't, he wasn't active. I didn't like it when we played against a team where their manager was up in the box uh, or in their touchline area, barking orders, going crazy at the team, telling them what to do, helping them. Wenger didn't do that. But guess what? Emery, every single game, even when we're winning 3-0 in the Europa League, He's out of his chair, he's barking orders, he's frantic, he's crazy, and I love it. I absolutely love that. I love Unai Emery. What, what better start could he have made? Honestly, this is a huge transition phase for Arsenal. After losing a manager after 23 years or whatever it was, it was always going to be so difficult to come in and make a name for yourself. And in our first North London derby, we're smashing him. We're absolutely smashing him. And he's done everything right today. He looked calm. He was he was very, very calm when we were 2-1 down, which you need. We've often... Oh, oh almost five. We, we looked like we could have collapsed. We really would have, I think, under Wenger. We would have gone 3-1, 4-1 down. It really wouldn't have surprised me anyway. But under Emery, we have a, we have a resolve. We have, we have this collective mentality not to just give in and collapse. And I love that. My voice is killing me. <laughs> when um, when Torreira scored, I'm going to talk about Torreira in a moment. When he scored, I screamed. Not like a little girl, but um, close. I squealed a little bit. It's just a moment of pure beauty when your favourite player, I mean, I'm talking about myself, obviously, but I'm sure a lot of Arsenal fans will agree with me. Torreira is, he's a diamond. The fact that we've got him for, what, £27 million? It might just be one of the best signings I've I've seen under any manager at Arsenal, well, and that's two managers basically since I was a young a young kid. But you know, I've I've gone through the signings like Santi Cazorla. You know, Santi Cazorla has gone down for me as one of the best signings in the history of the club because of the tough times we were in and the fact that we didn't blow a crazy amount of money on him, but he provided so much. Ramsey has turned out to be a very good signing as well. I went through that signing. Aubameyang, fantastic signing. A lot of money, but worth it. He's the top scorer in the league. He's got 10 goals already this season. But Torreira is on another level. In terms of value for money, I, I, I don't see a better signing right now for Arsenal. I just, I don't. And some of the clubs have, have done better. I think some clubs, for example, Liverpool got Shakiri for 13 million. That has to be right up there as one of the best signings in the history of the, of the Premier League. But there's something about this Torreira guy that I just, I love the guy. He's by far, and I mean by far, a huge distance above everyone else at the club for me as my favourite player right now. He does everything. He makes the game easy for everyone else. Xhaka's world class next to him. Xhaka, <laughs> okay, him and Xhaka together, when Guendouzi comes in, when Ramsey comes in, it doesn't matter who you partner him up with, as long as you've got Torreira in midfield, it's a much more solid and successful lineup. it just is, he is incredible, if someone wants to sign him next season, he's doubled in value, you'd have to pay 50, 60, maybe more to sign him, and the craziest thing is, and this scares me, I won't sleep until this is fixed, okay, bit of an exaggeration, but Torreira is only being paid 50,000 per week. I say only, but when you compare that to some of the other players in this team that maybe aren't as good, maybe aren't as important to the club right now, don't even get into the first team very often, are on double, triple that, okay? We need to tie him down even longer in the near future. I think, do it now. Just do it. He's proven his worth. It was a bit of a gamble, I guess you could say. A young player. He's never been to the Premier League before. He's a Uruguay international. 
who's just come onto the blocks in the last year or two, okay? It was a gamble spending close to 30 million on him, but they saw something in him. The scouts said, we have to get him. We've got him. Reward him. Give him 100k. Give him 150k. Give him Ramsey's wages. Ramsey's leaving at the end of the season. Give him his money, and then we'll spend 50k on another midfielder per week, you know? Just give, give him more money, because I'm so scared, and I know what will happen. Just wait till Chelsea lose Kante. Let's say Kante goes to PSG. What's going to happen? Chelsea will come knocking for Torreira. And at that point, Torreira will be top five, top ten CDMs in the world. He, he's already top ten, if you ask me. I don't, I don't actually think there's any real similar players to Torreira in the Premier League, at least. He's, he's a one of a kind. He really is. All oh, Tottenham are in here. Oh, terrible shot. Poor Ericsson. Game over. Game over. Unai Emery, take a bow. He shakes the hand of Pochettino. And by the way, nothing against Pochettino. He is a fantastic manager. I would have loved to have him at Arsenal if he never went to Tottenham. I obviously despise Tottenham as a club. A lot of their players piss me off. But Pochettino, go to Madrid. Go, go and do something next level because he is one of the top managers. He will win trophies with another club. Tottenham will not win a trophy. They just won't. Kane won't be there forever. Deli Ali won't be there forever. Huming Son, one of their best players. He won't be at Tottenham if they don't win anything. Trust me, Tottenham, they're, they're up here right now. Okay, I'll be honest. Arsenal, they're like here. The last few years, Tottenham have been going up and up and up. They've just plateaued. Maybe not even this season. The season before last, when they were almost, almost right up there. Okay, that's it. They've lost that opportunity. They're gone. In my opinion, Tottenham will not win a trophy with this squad. And if they do, it will be the Carabao Cup. Okay, do you know what? I wouldn't even give a shit. And I try not to swear in these videos, but I honestly would not care. Go and win the Carabao Cup. Good on you. But until they win an FA Cup, the Premier League, the Champions League, the Europa League, I just don't, I just do not see Tottenham being as big or as good as Arsenal. And, you know, I'm a biased fan, obviously, because I'm an Arsenal fan. Tottenham are a great side. When they're at it, you saw them against Chelsea. But tonight, against Arsenal, we outclassed them at times. Or oh, Banning and Lacazette embracing there. I love those two. Guendouzi as well. They're so close. I love the fact that Guendouzi is almost being fathered into the team by Lacazette or Bamiyang. All the French-speaking players just seem to... Oh, look at Holding as well. Holding was world-class today, man. Anyway, I've got to stop. I'm going to like a Christmas dinner. That's why I wanted to start recording a little bit earlier. It finishes 4-2. I don't even need to change the, uh, the score. Thank you so, so, so much, Emery, for coming to Arsenal. Thank you for making this transition period a lot easier than it could have been. It's not over yet. We've still got a long way to go. But this season, top four, win the Europa League. That would be incredible. And we have transitioned. And Torreira. Come on, lads. Fantastic game. I'm so, so happy with that. Thank you so much.